and welcome to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we are in Cincinnati, Ohio, St. Bernard to be exact, at St. Clement Catholic Church and Franciscan Friary. I'd like to introduce to you Father Fred Link, who will tell us all about this beautiful church. Father. Thank you, Donata. I feel honored to be able to, to be here today to talk about St. Clement. I've been stationed here for the last seven years, and it has a rich history go going all the way back to 1850, when there was a little church uh, built on property bought by German Catholics who had settled in this area and wanted their own church. So uh, they built this place, and the following year, like a little steeple was added to it and uh, continued that way for a time. Parish activities were going on, but they didn't have a big building. So in 1871, this edifice was built, um, at least most of this. Uh, it was in the 1890s that a transept was added. You can see the transept. And uh, so from 1890 on, 1,200 folks could worship here My, in this, this building. a very healthy beginning. It was a strong Catholic presence mm -hmm. in this part of town. And folks did come from other parts, too, to pray here in the church. Uh, and then, Father, I understand that in 1963, the church endured a fire. Could you tell us about that? Very significant. Behind the beautiful big altar, um, there were rags and... Uh, cans of liquids and all that caught on fire. And uh, apparently it had burned for some time because it destroyed the very ornate uh, Gothic altar uh, with a huge picture of uh, St. Clement that had been painted over in Austria specifically for this church, which is where it gets its name, by the way. Uh, Father Clement uh, said he would donate the picture, have it sent here, uh, if we named the church in his honor. So St. Clement became the patron. But anyway, this fire uh, destroyed uh, the altar, some furnishings, the sanctuary for the most part. All the stained glass windows. Stained glass windows were all buckled. Damage would have needed considerable repair. And they were stained glass with uh, pictures of the life of Christ in them. So what we're looking at now is not what was uh, at that time. Right. So, um, and it also did some damage to the ceiling and uh, weakened the ceiling and weakened some of the, the braces up there. So they put in a temporary drop ceiling that was pretty awful. It was in 1987 that the weakened, I mentioned that there was the weakened uh, uh, ceiling. Um, some of the structure actually collapsed, part of the ceiling collapsed. And no one was injured. No one, no one was injured at the time, but the church was declared unsafe. And so we couldn't worship here in church any longer. And the uh, folks had to worship over in school. So our school gymnasium became on weekends, the parish church. We had daily masses in another building on our grounds. Uh, and then uh, in 1991, the church was uh, rededicated. And uh, the present structure that you see um, is is the result. It, and the whitewashed walls are part of this new reconstruction. Absolutely. And the ceiling, if you, uh, it's, our ceiling is gorgeous. Folks, notice that. That's going up to the original. There's nothing above it. And, uh, and it, it's like one of the, it's, you know, drop dead gorgeous, I think, when you, when you look up. But I think the whole church is magnificent. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, what we had before, the Gothic, was very beautiful, the ornate. But um, in a sense, this was consistent with much that came out of Vatican Council II, where the church is the people of God. And the people of God 
Uh, this is the liturgical consultant who guided this uh, Brother Frank Kazmarzik, who's now gone home to the Lord, but was a Benedictine oblate, and he was the consultant. In fact, he's done a number of churches in the country. The church now holds 400. It went from 1,200 to 400 because the St. Bernard Catholic population had significantly decreased. And where the old altar was, another chapel was built. And um, that's, you can still see the original ceiling in there also. That's where the friars have our daily prayer, morning and evening, and also where we have two daily masses with the people who come so we don't have to heat this particular edifice. Absolutely. When you come into the main body of church, okay, that you're in a commons area and uh, that's a gathering space and it's significant. It's used for lots of things. Primary, of course, is the baptismal font, which is a pool and where we have full immersion uh, as appropriate at the Easter vigil and other times at request, but it's at the center. But there's also then space around there. We have the Stations of the Cross in the commons and during on the walls. But when you come up the steps out of the commons area, you've just come up off of the main floor, you go down again and that's where the slope comes in. Understood. So you go down, but the priest who is up on the altar, when he looks out, no head is behind another person's head. So I love it because I can see in people's eyes and um, the communication between the assembly, between the priest is just, which is, is just beautiful. That is perfect. And if you would tell us about that simplistically beautiful altar. Uh, underneath you notice now that's, people don't know what that box is under the altar. That's our, where relics are and um, in, a, a number of relics, uh, including St. John Bosco, Maria Goretti, because the pastor who was pastor here had a devotion to young people in one of those, but there's a relic of St. Clement, and there are a number of relics underneath. So how do we separate the commons from the body, from the worship space, other than going up the steps well, to create two small rooms? controversial at first people didn't quite understand they thought they looked like outhouses and one of them though is the reconciliation room right. it's wonderfully comfortable for that the other is the priest vesting sacristy so that the priest can be back there and the procession can begin from the back I think that's a striking one so in 93 an internet international architectural design award was given to this as kind of the church of the year and they were uh, an international recognition exactly because uh, i think it's beautiful and because was honored on in that award and we that uh, that certificate is hanging in the back the blessed sacrament um today uh, the we wouldn't be able to do a church just like this uh, we would need to have the reserved sacrament in the body of the church visible to the people but at the time this was built very appropriately we could have a chapel where the blessed sacrament was reserved accessible to the people which indeed it, it is it was our formal bap, former baptistry and it's open people can come in all hours of the day and where is the body of the church to safeguard the organ and other stuff is locked up but people can have access to the blessed sacrament the other significant thing is the grotto we have a beautiful lord's grotto that was restored in the 1990s also by a pastor it's a model of the grotto in, in lords uh, in france and uh, it's a favorite of folks. They love to come.
Thank you for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we were in Cincinnati, Ohio in the neighborhood of St. Bernard to visit the Catholic Church St. Clement. We are grateful to Father Fred who is a Franciscan friar and appreciate his expertise. Visit us again soon and remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often.